Safe Moon is working with nanotechnology, and this is absolutely massive as far as for the potential moving forward. We have a couple little tidbits that have been said by the CEO of Safe Moon, as well as I'm diving in and sharing with you some research notes that I've found, so you can keep that as part of your back catalog as we move forward. Let's see how much of this might end up being true and how much isn't, as well as I called it not only one thing, but two things now that I really think about it. I'll go and explain that in a second. But first, I want to say a special shout out. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. A double shout out. Thank you to Rem AG and Xavier Zamora for being a higher tier level. If you want to join up on that board, you can be on that for as little as a dollar a month. It's a great deal. There's a link in the description. And also, please FYI, I am not a financial advisor. Everything I'm sharing is my own opinion. It's my own research. I encourage you to do your own research. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the news. Okay, so Area 32, this has been brought up a couple times now. John had mentioned earlier today in response to the question, when massive leap in technological advancement, John said, already there, the hydrophobic slash hydrophilic nanoparticles are being applied to the turbines at Area 32 by the Dark Moon team. They're getting me hyperspectral imaging and other scans and data. In addition to that, what was actually said technically before, I know that's a weird way to phrase that, but this was during the Safe Moon Sunday AMA. Somebody had written this down as a quote. Area 32 of Dark Moon is working on kinetic energy with wind turbines using nanotechnology in the form of both hydro philic and hydrofolic nanoparticles in order to increase efficiency for their macro IoT infrastructure. Also, they have built a true Web3 communications network using proprietary technology that outperforms everything invented thus far. It is the truest decentralized internet with a hardware box that is already built with a mesh network system that has a broader reach than any other system. Just finishing up blockchain to incorporate it within the system. So... Very nice that somebody had actually done a transcription of that, so I do appreciate that. And let's go ahead and break down a couple key things here. Area 32 of Dark Moon. So I was initially trying to do searches of Area 32 because I just vaguely remembered what was being said during the AMA. This is saying Area 32 of Dark Moon. So it's John's classification of Area 32. However, why would he name it Area 32? I got a couple different things that I think that could be tied in with that, one of which was the transactions we saw over on BitMart in the past that became the big meme that John even said like, hey, let's spam 32, let's get 32 trending over on Twitter and stuff, right? So I had mentioned in the past, my theory was that they were using that as a form of tests to do with their calculations to try and figure out certain metrics of burn rates for that of SafeMoon, efficiency-wise, all that kind of stuff. So back to back to back, it was very, very small amounts. It was only 32 SafeMoon. We're talking about Safe Moon version one, not version two. So it was nothing for price on each one of these trades. That was one theory that I have, and I think it's more justified now based on the fact that we know that this is being tied in with the wind turbines, and it's called Area 32. That's one thing. Next up, Area 32, if you go ahead and do a little bit more research into this, you can find out that Area 32 references the brain. I don't know if this is their intention, if it's symbolic of it, something like that, or they just happen to pick the number because they like it. But just so you know, Area 32 is pretty interesting. It balances the activity from the cognitive and the emotional brain areas inside of primates, which you and I, we are primates. Navigating through life requires balancing emotion and reason, a feat accomplished by the brain region Area 32 of the anterior cingulate cortex. The area maintains emotional equi equilibrium by relaying information between cognitive and emotional brain regions, according to new research in Monkeys published in J Neurosci. Okay, so relaying information is similar to what's going on with the mesh networks. You may say it's a little bit of a stretch. The idea of an equilibrium balance of communication between two different things. Well, that sounds like what's kind of going on here with the wind turbines generating the electricity power, using it as a macro IoT to then be able to essentially create a decentralized, um, a decentralized internet, right? Which is what they were saying right here. Also take note, 
that they said proprietary technology. What does that mean? Well, proprietary means that it's legally protected. No one else can use that same specific thing. There's a legal protection that's there. Other people might be able to license out that technology, but there's a lot of value if you create something and you get it to be proprietary. So it's awesome to hear that they've got something that's already there. A true Web3 communications network. So the Web3, we've been hearing a lot of activity just across the board. GameStop, we have also the, um, I can't remember his name. Darn it, I just forgot his name. He's been on Twitter and a lot of people have been associating him with the Safe Moon Project, even though he doesn't officially work with them. Something Paul, forgot his first name. Anyways, so that guy was talking about they're searching for Web3. Web3 is just a growing industry space, especially with NFTs. And we know NFTs, John has talked about and saying that there's a lot more applications with those moving forward, especially if you're looking at like a macro IoT type perspective. So there's a lot of stuff to kind of take away with this. The blockchain being finished up is looking as that next puzzle piece, but John did identify right here that they are already doing testing. Uh, they're getting me hyperspectral imaging and other scans and data. So the hydrophobic and hydrophallic, uh, hydrophilic, I don't know how to say these fully. What exactly are those? Well, that is more or less identified with the water absorption, right? So this is actually a good little excerpt right here that I found, but ironically, somebody else had already mentioned this over on the Reddit, uh, the subreddit. So it was YoYo78. So, you know, shout outs to you for coming across that. I was like, wait a second, did I just see this somewhere else? And I was like, oh yeah, that guy did it. So anyways, so you got sample of, sorry, samples of wind turbine blade surface. Let's try this again. Again, I can't talk right now. Samples of wind turbine blade surface have been covered with a super hydrophobic coating made of silica nanoparticles embedded in commercial epoxy paint. The super hydrophobic surfaces have a water contact angle around 152 degrees, a uh, high stresses less than 2 degrees, and a water drop sliding angle around 0.5 degrees. These surfaces are water repellent so that water drops cannot remain motionless on the surface. Examination of coated and uncoated surfaces with scanning electron microscopy, mi microscopy and atomic force microscopy together with measurements of water contact angles indicates that the air trapped in the cavity enhances the water repellency similarly to the lotus leaf effect. Moreover, this new coating is stable under UVC radiation and water pouring. The production of the nanoscale coating film being simple and low cost, it can be considered as a suitable candidate for water protection of different outdoor structures. So essentially, this being applied could allow for the structures, the wind turbines to last longer, their lifespan could become more efficient. Other uses with wind turbines and with nanotechnologies that I wanna go ahead and note on, there's also an article here which had noted within wind, within wind turbines, carbon nanotubes can be used within the blades themselves, making them stronger and lighter, thus improving energy efficiency. These blades are 50% lighter than glass fiber blades, but far stronger. This means that larger blades can be used, which will start operating at lower wind speeds. Now, something else to keep in mind is the efficiency of the wind turbine in relationship to wind speed. So the minimum speed for a wind turbine to work most efficiently is about five miles per hour. That's eight kilometers per hour. On the other hand, if a wind turbine is spinning too fast, it could one, cause mechanical damage and two, create a wall against the wind to safely spin the turbine to create electricity. So efficiency is a high priority in being able to uh, capitalize on the amount of energy captured on each individual wind turbine. Plus you want it to last quite long. Plus if you're using it on a macro mesh network, creating a decentralized internet, having it as a relay point, having everything integrated into a nice little box format like what they were saying is gonna be very, very important. And you know what, that's gonna be it for this video. So let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments down below. I think you guys are awesome. <laughs> Maybe Area 32 has to do with aliens, I mean. <laughs> Let's just throw that out there right at the very end. Like someone's going to say it, right? I got referral links in the description if you want to get free cryptocurrency or stock.
You can go check out Coinbase, Gemini, BlockFi, Weeble. This is not financial advice, just my opinion. And also, if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit the thumbs up like button. It does help us out with the YouTube search algorithm. Click the bell icon so you know whenever we go live. And I will see you in the next episode.